Francisco. It is nine o'clock. Good morning, everybody. Uh, happy Tuesday. So instead of a warm up today, I thought I would start with just a quick review of all the formulas that we've done so far for transformations. We're going to do our last transformation today. We're going to be doing dilations. Um, so uh, we just want to make sure that we have all of these in one place in your notes ready to go. Um, so, so get these down. Uh, just a little heads up for what's going to be happening for the rest of the trimester. So uh, I just want you guys to know that our, the last day of the trimester is March 12th. And if you, so that's, that's uh, less than two weeks away. Um, so that means we only have one, two, three, four, five classes left. One of those uh, classes is going to be review and another one of those classes is going to be for the final. So really, we only have three classes left of new material. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing uh, dilations. And then we're going to do a little intro into triangles and congruency before we get ready for the second trimester. OK, so again, we're almost done with this trimester. Make sure you guys are getting your home, your uh, your practice homework in because uh, that's 80 percent of your grade. So make sure you guys are doing that. If you need help with that, make sure you email me or uh, come to my office hours, okay? All right, so again, uh, we're making sure that we're getting this done. Uh, if you guys need a little bit more time, you can just type in chat that you need a little bit more time to get that down. Uh, if I don't hear from anybody, then I'll just get started with dilations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Cause like, right. It's good to have all of this in one location because all our homeworks are open notes and, and our final is going to be open notes as well. So it's going to be good to have this in one easy location um, so that you guys can have all that. And then uh, since we're taking notes on dilations today, uh, you'll have all of transformations in one spot. That's kind of my thinking there. So that way we don't have to flip through a whole bunch of different things. Okay, and also guys, remember again, that the end of the trimester is March 12th. There's no school that day, so we don't have class that day. So uh, just make sure you guys are getting all your work done and getting that done as well. So again, we're ending transformations today. Um, and, and then after transformations, we're gonna do a little bit of triangles and triangle congruency. All right, I'm gonna take this off freeze. So uh, again, make sure you guys get these down. There might've been some confusion over reflect over the X axis and reflect over the Y axis. So remember with the X axis, just the Y is changing sign. And with the Y axis, just the X is changing sign. So make sure you guys have this down. And as always guys, cause I know some people are joining late, uh, this will be up on YouTube. Uh, so if you need to go back and write anything down, all of this is on YouTube. Okay. So you can pause it. You can fast forward. You can play me at, at double the speed. Yeah. You can do all of that. All right. So we're going to finish transformations today. That's, uh, we're going to finish chapter four today. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and move forward with this because it's been four minutes and I think four minutes is enough time for everyone who is on time to write this stuff down. Okay, so oop, zoomed in a little bit too much. All right, so what we're talking about today is 4.5. We're doing dilations. And again, I keep repeating this, but this is the last day of transformations. So we did translations or when we shift things left, right, up, down. Reflections is when we flip something over a, a mirror. And then rotations is when we turn something. Dilations is a bit different. So for these three that we did before, they're considered rigid motion. And rigid motion is when a shape stays the same. So a dilation is, is when something gets bigger or smaller. So when a shape, a shape gets bigger, or smaller, okay? So when a shape gets bigger or smaller. And if you ever go to the eye doctor, 
uh, the doctor might put some uh, drops in your eye and they dilate your eyes, meaning uh, usually they want to make your, pu your pupil as big as possible, right? So the black part of your eye gets really, really big. So that, that's called a dilation, okay? Now, a couple of things that we need to know about dilations. So dilation, it's the same shape, but it's a different size. Okay. Now, this is now this is different than what we've been doing with translations, reflections and rotations because with all those ones before, it was the same shape and it was the same size. So the dilation is the only transformation that we're going to look at that changes size. Okay? So it's it's if it's if it started out being a triangle, it's still going to be a triangle, but it's going to going to be bigger or smaller. Okay? So it's really important to, to remember that as we're doing this. Again, with translations, reflections, and rotation, it's the same shape and the same size. So dilation is the only thing that is changing size. Now to do this, we have something called the scale factor. Okay, and I abbreviate scale factor as SF. Okay, the scale factor. So the way that scale factor works is scale factor is the number that it's our ratio that tells us are we getting bigger or smaller. So a scale factor, right, if it's greater than one, it's going to get bigger. Okay. So if a scale factor is greater than one, then your shape is going to get bigger. If your scale factor equals one, then it's going to be the same, right? In our world, we know this as a copy, okay? And if the scale factor is less than one, then it's going to get smaller. Okay, so that's kind of the key there. So dilations, it's the same shape, different size, and we know if it's how, how much bigger or smaller it's going to get based off something called the scale factor. Okay, so what we're going to fo first uh, focus on is finding scale factor, and then we're going to focus on using scale factor. And those are the two skills that we're going to figure out today. So I think what you guys are going to find uh, with reflections and dilations, there's a lot of equations, uh, but with dilations, it's going to be really straightforward. It's all going to be just multiplication because we're only going to dilate from zero zero. Okay, I'm not going to write that down. Uh, just because I don't think it's super important. But all of our dilations are going to be from the origin, so we can just multiply. Okay. So that's just kind of a brief, this is what dilation is. It makes a shape bigger or smaller. Same shape, different size. How do we know if it's going to be bigger or smaller? Well, if the scale factor is greater than 1, it's bigger. If it's less than 1, it's smaller. So that's kind of just our first part there. And again, if you guys have questions or if I'm going too fast, make sure that you say something, uh, use chat, or you can turn on your mic and, and speak that way. All right. So the first thing that we're going to practice do is doing is finding scale factor. Okay. So... Um, a lot of times we want to find scale factor, like we build a model of something and then we want to know, okay, so how would I scale this up to actual size? Okay. Um, so to do that, um, I'm just going to give you uh, the relationship first and I'll show you how it works. So um, scale factor is actually a ratio of new over old. So scale factor is new over old. And what I mean by that is if you take your old shape and you multiply that by your scale factor, you get your new shape. And hopefully you guys can see here is that these two equations are the same equation, right? If I divided both sides by the old shape, right, that's exactly what this is. So this is kind of the relationship. If you take your old shape 
and you multiply it by a scale factor, you're gonna get your nude shape. Your, your nude shape, that's not what I meant to say, your new shape. So scale factor equals new over old, okay? New over old. And so that's helpful for some people trying to figure it out. And the reason why this is, is what, what this is saying in English is how many times does our old shape fit into our new shape? So how many times does our old shape fit into our new shape? So for example, if I'm building a, a model car, right? So let's say I can't afford a, uh, a Ferrari, but I have a model Ferrari. And if my scale factor from my model to the real thing is um, one uh, is, um, is, is uh, five, then that tells me that my model would, five of my model would fit into my new shape because it's five times the size, okay? So it's how many times does our old shape fit into the new shape? So how many times bigger or smaller is that model? Okay, and you guys might've seen that, right? If you've ever built a model before, it will tell you the scale factor. It'll be like, hey, this is the, um, well, I don't know, uh, what's, maybe you, it's like the space needle and like this, this version, this model, the space needle is one, one twentieth of the original size, okay? So scale factor. So we're gonna use this to find scale factor. Our scale factor equals our new shape over our old shape, or you can think of it as your old shape times your scale factor is gonna equal your new shape. Okay, uh, another one, let's say you wanted to make something twice as big, you take your old shape, you multiply it by two, now it's twice as big. Okay, so it's just multiplication, it's gonna be really easy. Okay, so there's kind of the setup there. So now let's, let's put all this into practice and see what we can do. So uh, over here, I'm gonna do an example. Looks like I had some black in that one. Okay, so for our example, okay, I'm gonna have, uh, let's say a point C, and then I'm gonna have PQ, and I'm gonna have P prime, Q prime, okay? And then we're just gonna go like this to measure distance, okay? So what we have here is we have two segments. We have PQ, we have P prime, Q prime, and then we have a point C. Now, if I was looking at these segments, can you guys identify which one's the old shape or the original shape, right? Because looking at these markings, you guys see how this is prime? So that would mean P right here, PQ, that is our old shape. And this is our new shape. Okay. So if I were to put some distances here, so from C to P, this is eight. And then from C to P prime, that's 12. What we can do now is we can find scale factor. Okay, so we're going to find scale factor. Okay, so the distance from C to P was eight. And then the distance from C to P prime is 12. So I know then that my scale factor equals my new over my old, so my new, my distance is 12, my old distance is eight. Now, the cool thing about Desmos calculator, so either if you have one of these yellow calculators or you're using Desmos, if you type a fraction into it, it will automatically reduce the fraction for you. So we say our scale factor is three halves, okay? So that is, if you take eight times three over two, you get 12, okay? So if I try this out, I go eight times three over two, I get 12, okay? So I, that's my scale factor. 
to go from this smaller triangle to this bigger triangle, I'm taking this smaller triangle and I'm multiplying it by three halves. Okay, so scale factor is a multiplication. Okay, and it's just, hey, if I take, right, this, this new over old, then that is where I'm going. Okay, so make sure you identify what your new is, what your old is, and then that's your scale factor. Okay, and that really is all there is to it. Okay. So that's finding scale factor. Are you guys okay with that? You guys, let's try one. Let's try one. Let's see what you guys can get. Okay. So um, was that enough time to get that down? Can I, can we do one where we try one? Okay. All right. So we're going to find the scale factor. So let's say I have, I'm gonna make this a cool 3D shape. Okay, now you might recognize this as a projector. Okay, so I drew a big triangle and then I drew a smaller triangle and then I drew a point. So this kind of scale is a projection scale. So if uh, we were in class, I would have a projector and the projector would be at point C and it's going, and the further away the projector goes, the bigger the image gets. Now I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna say this is P and then this is P prime. So we're gonna call this distance four and we're gonna call this total distance, we're gonna call that 12. So I want you guys to find the scale factor from P to P prime. Now be careful, direction matters because if we go the wrong way, then that's a different scale factor. Okay, so direction matters. You have to have new over old. So go ahead and find the scale factor really quickly. So if you're stuck, right, scale factor equals new over old. So go ahead and find the new and the old. So your P prime, that's going to be your new, right? That's going to be your image. Your P is going to be your old, right? So I'm using the prime notation to tell me which one's my new one. So my scale factor is going to equal 4 over 12 which is one third. Okay. How are we doing with this? Does anybody have any questions or comments? It's really just finding that ratio, right? So scale factor is, it's just new over old um, and, and that's it, okay? So, uh, now, if we were going to go the other way, right, if we were to switch this, then you're really just flipping that fraction. So what this is saying, now the book would call this a reduction. Okay, now I wrote that word down. It's not totally important that you know it, but the fancy word for smaller is reduction. Okay. So a reduction means that you're getting less. So we started out at this big triangle and then we're reducing to this small triangle, okay? And we're reducing by a factor of one third, right? Our scale factor is one third. Now, if we were to go backwards, right? If I was starting from P prime and I was going to P, then I would be tripling it, right? So what's really cool is that you should always double check. Notice how this number, right, is less than one, okay? So it's less than one, so we know we're getting smaller, right? And a, and a, and a good and a good hint here, if you ever have a, uh, right, you can just type into your calculator. So if you're like, man, I don't know if three halves, um, uh, sorry, I don't know if, if one third is greater than um, or less than one, just in your calculator, go one divided by three, and then 
you get that. And then on Desmos or uh, these yellow calculators, you can switch between a fraction and a decimal. So if it's easier to look at a decimal to see if it's less than one, then you should do that, okay, or greater than one. So we're definitely getting smaller here. All right, and then I'm gonna have you guys try one more and then we'll move on. Okay, so let's do, I'm gonna do kind of the same picture, but I'm gonna try to throw you guys off here. So I'm gonna go and then P prime and then P. So then I'm gonna have 10 and 25. So I want you guys to find the scale factor. And again, order is important, right? So we, we have to figure out where's my start point, where's my end point, right? So I start at one shape and I'm going to the other shape and the notation will tell you which one's your old one, which one's your new one. All right, so hopefully you guys did, right? My P with nothing on it, that's my original, right? Or my old one, right? Because it's my pre-image. And then my new one over here, right? That's my image, so I go from old to new. So when I go to write my scale factor, it's new over old. So then what are we gonna have here? I'm gonna have 10 over 20, oops, that's not true. I made a mistake. Uh, the new is 25, so 25 over 10, okay? Now, let's take a look. 25 over 10, I think that can be reduced. You're always going to check on your calculator. So I'm going to go 25 over 10. Oops. I get 5 halves. So I get that my scale factor is 5 halves. Now, if I don't know if this is greater than one, I can just change that to a decimal and I see that it's 2.5. So right, this is greater than one, right? So this is my answer. It's greater than one. So the fancy term for getting bigger is an enlargement. Oops, there's an E after the G enlargement. Here, I'll write it down underneath it. Okay. So there you go. We have our two fancy words, reduction and enlargement. And that's all you have to do to find scale factor. Now, this is a very basic and I wanted to do a projector example, but uh, we're not always going to have projection examples. Um, uh, but for, to keep, we want to keep things simple because we're in a pandemic and we're not in class. So in, in order to keep things simple, I just wanted to show you one example of it, okay? So that's how we find a scale factor. It's always new over old, okay? And, and please remember, the reason why it's new over old is because if we go ahead and we multiply both sides by the old shape, the old shape times your scale factor gets your new shape, and that makes sense. That makes sense, okay? And you can always double check your work and be like, hey, is this true? And right, and like, am I getting bigger? Yeah, I am getting bigger, right? So my old one here, I'm getting bigger. This makes sense. So you guys see how I made a mistake here, right? Where I did 10 over 25. Well, that would have been two fifths and that's less than one. And that would have been getting smaller. And so you can just check your answer here, right? So I'm not getting smaller. So all you have to do is just flip your answer. And so that's kind of a, an advanced technique. So if you write it wrong the first time, you can correct it when you check, like, am I getting bigger? No, this is getting smaller, that's not correct. And it's just flipped, okay? So all you have to do to go different directions is flip it. And now some of you aren't gonna care about what I just said, but for everybody else that's like, yeah, that makes sense, that's good, okay, we can go on. We would have spent more time doing that if we were in person. All right, so that's how you find scale factors. So if you already have two shapes that are similar, 
that and you're going to do that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to use scale factor to find new shape. Okay. So now we're going to use the scale factor to find new shapes. Okay. And so to do this, I'm going to do this visually uh, and I'm going to do this purely algebraically. Okay. So to do this, we're going to do an example together. Uh, let's take a look here. So in our example, we're going to have a triangle. And my triangle is going to be uh, triangle ABC, where A is going to be 2, 1, B is going to be 4, 1, and C is going to be 4, negative 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to dilate. And when I say dilate, that's a dilation. I'm going to dilate triangle ABC by a scale factor oops, of two. Oh, can I, I just realized something. The book, um, oh, I'll let you write this down first. The book uh, has a special symbol for this. So they say K equals five over two. And this is K equals one third. So this is how the book will do it. So the book calls the book calls uh, the scale factor k, and I just that's going to show up on no I've never seen any, no one else really uses k as scale factor, so um, I just that's how it's going to show up in your homework, okay? So it's going to show up as k equals k equals. It'll ask what is k? What's the scale factor? So k is just scale factor. In fact, we can I forgot about that. We can go back uh, to scale factor. Uh, K is scale factor in the book. Okay. So K is scale factor in the book. When I normally teach this, I normally don't use the book. So that's why I got to go back and change how we're doing things. So K, that scale factor in the book. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're going to graph this. Okay. So I'm going to start by graphing because I want to give uh, you guys some visual on this. So to do this, I'm going to go like this. Okay. And then I'm going to graph all of these points. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Okay. So I went four up and down and I went eight out. And then I'm going to take uh, my blue pen and I'm going to graph these points. So my first one is at two, one, and then I'm at four, one. So one, two, three, four, up one, and then four, negative one. So one, two, three, four, or down one. So I'm gonna just draw these together. So this is A, B, and C. Should be a right triangle, but you can tell that I didn't draw my shape perfect, but that's okay. We're just getting a general idea. Okay, so the book would say our K or our scale factor is two. So all we're gonna do, and this is the part that's really easy, all we're gonna do is we're going to multiply everything by two. Now, the, the book uses a formula. I've never, in all of my years teaching, I, 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 we, I don't use this formula. 
but basically they're just saying this every point x y such that I have 2x 2y right so all it's saying is that we're doubling all of our x's and we're doubling all of our y's and that's all we're doing so some people like to go through and find all the points first and then graph it and some people like to just graph it and look so since we're doing the graph I'm going to use the graph so one way it, the easy way to do this with graphs without algebra is just get directions to how you get there and then multiply those directions by your scale factor so for example to get to a I would go right to up one well now let's just double that I'm gonna go right to up one uh, let's use a fun color so I'm gonna go right to up one right to up one B got in the way there and here's a prime okay so one way of doing that is just taking your directions and then multiplying those directions by two now you could have done it by hand as well so for example a prime here is going to be 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times 1 is 2 okay so I double check I went 1 2 3 4 up 1 2 so either way you do it is perfectly fine I'm just trying to show you guys a couple of different ways of doing it so you find the way that you like most okay let's try B out so doing it the graph way my directions are go right 1 2 3 4 up 1 so now I'm gonna go right 1 2 3 4 up 1 okay if you like doing it the other way then you're just gonna take these two numbers times 2 so 4 times 2 is 8 1 times 2 is 2 now hopefully you guys are looking at this and you're like hey I like dilations I can do dilations right because you're just multiplying okay and then C I go right four down one so I'm gonna go right four down one uh, got kind of close there so I'm at C prime okay so C prime is at 8 negative 2 okay now again we're only gonna be really looking at these sort of projector dilations because uh, everything is gonna be at 0 0 so do you guys remember before we had that point C well here on a graph my point C is the center or the origin okay and you could you can even draw a line like this do you guys see how it's exactly like the problems we did before kind of cool right it kind of gives it that I mean if I connected if I connected that back one too I'd get a cool 3d effect um, so these are these are kind of categorized as projector dilations and that's what the only we only have time for and so basically it's the idea that our center is always going to be at zero zero and so that means we can just take our coordinates of our old shape and we can multiply it by our scale factor to get our new one and that's it right that's it so basically right and with our scale factor now if you needed to find your scale factor you would take your new over your old so if we take scale factor and that would be new over old right so um, so four right so if you take a look at a prime you would have four over two is two and you would have two over one is two right so this is just looking at a prime a prime over a and then you should see your scale factor in all of this right so notice how with every number the scale factor is the same it's two so everything is doubled that's how scale factor works. Do you guys have any questions before we move on to our next one? Okay, so all we're doing, we're going from the center, all we're doing is we're taking our old points, we're multiplying it by our scale factor, we get our new points, and notice how our scale factor is in every number, right? So if I compare the x's, it's there. If I compare the y's, it's there. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do another one then do you guys need more time or for for a class of 33 you're awfully quiet just you know to think that I thought I was gonna have to practice my my twitch reading skills of chat are we okay guys are you guys even there <laughs> 
So like the two people who are responding, you guys doing okay? All right. All right, guys. Uh, I can't help you guys if you don't if you don't tell me what's going on. So, all right. So let's do another example then. Yeah. yeah. If you're half asleep, try waking up a little bit earlier, and then uh, and then you won't have that. Go to bed earlier, wake up earlier. Uh, so let's go. Uh, here's another example. I think this is example. So this is example number two of what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna have a four-sided shape. So we're gonna have k is at negative three, six, and we're gonna have l is at zero, six, and m is at three, three, and n is at negative three, negative three. Okay, so go ahead and grit those down. And then what we're gonna do here is we're going to dilate K, L, M, N by one third. Okay, ooh, fractions. So let's talk about fractions, okay? So again, I'm gonna do this visually uh, because it's good to have some visuals. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph this. So I notice I have positives and negatives. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a full coordinate system this time. Uh, it looks like my biggest ones are six, so I'm gonna try to go six in every direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay, not very square, but we're gonna go ahead. So the reason why I picked six is that six is my largest number in these points. And then I look at this, if I'm dilating by one third, that means I'm getting smaller, right? Right, or the fancy word would be, I have a reduction. I'm having a reduction, okay? Because it's less than one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, plot these points. So I'm gonna go, k is left three, so one, two, three, and then all the way up to six, I made sure that was my highest point. Okay, so there's my k. And then my l is at zero, six. Okay, so there's my l. And then my m is at one, two, three. One, two, three. So there's my m. And then my n is at negative three, negative three. Kind of a funky looking shape, isn't it? Okay. So remember our, our final shape here is gonna be smaller. Now, when we're talking about this, we have to remember, and I'm gonna put this in uh, a little notes here. Dilations are always written. Uh, written is is written two T's. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, written is two T's. Written as multiplication. Okay, so dilations, dilations are always written as multiplication, but multiplying by a fraction isn't really easy to do. So just remember, multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three. Okay, so if you have a fraction, you can either multiply by that fraction, calculators will do that, it's really easy to do on a calculator, but it's the same as dividing by three. Okay, 
So multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three. Well, technically it's the same as multiplying by one and then dividing by three, but we ignore the multiplying by one because anything times one is itself. So how do I do this? Well, I'm gonna take these coordinates and I'm gonna divide each one by three. So three goes into negative three one time, three goes into six twice. So it's gonna be negative one up two. So we have k prime, okay? So I'll write down all my answers as well. So k prime would be at negative one and then two. And then L prime, so L prime, now zero divided by anything, it's still zero. So three goes into six twice, so it's just up two. So that's L prime. So L prime is at zero, two. Um, and then I have M prime. So M prime is three, three. So three goes into three once. So I'm gonna be at one, one. So here's M prime, one, one. And then N prime, three goes into negative three, negative once. So I'd have negative one, negative one. So I have N prime. And then if I connect those, I should have the same shape, but one third of the size. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so this is how dilations work. Okay, so I'm gonna have you guys try a couple on your own just to make sure you guys get how that works. Now remember, today is our last day of transformations. So we're gonna, we're just gonna I think dilations are the easiest. We're definitely ending on an easy one. Uh, so make sure that you guys have all of this dilation stuff. And then remember, we started class with the review of translations, reflections, and rotations. So make sure you have that all in the same place. Okay. So let's practice a couple the way that your book uh, practices them. Does anybody have any questions so far? Or are people doing okay? All right, so we're gonna do a couple try on your own. And we're gonna do these without graph paper, without graphing, because we don't really have that. So uh, in fact, I'm just gonna give you two at once and I'm going to give you in the terms that the book uses so that you guys get used to doing it the book's way. So I'm gonna give you a list of points. So for example, this first one is P is negative two, negative one, Q, is negative one zero and r is zero negative one where your k equals four and i just really want to make the book this is your scale factor okay and then the second one i'm going to give you two at once we're going to do t is five negative five and we're gonna do R is 10, negative five, and Y is 10, five, where K equals four tenths. Okay, so, and you can use a calculator if you would like, right? So I'm gonna give you guys some time to just, you're just finding the new shape. So, find the new shape. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna give you guys a little time to do that. Um, probably two minutes. I mean, I think that'd be plenty of time.
And again, if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. Yep, scale factor is the is the number that tells you how much you're uh, expanding or uh, uh, shrinking. Yep. Yep, that's all the scale. That's what scale factor is, right? It's just the ratio of new over old. So it's just telling you how many times does the old one fit into the new one. So if it's less than one, it will shrink. If it's greater than one, it will get bigger. That is time. So let's take a look at these. Do you guys need a little bit more time or are we okay? Okay. I'm going to go I'm going to go over this then. So uh so taking a look at this. So um oh, a little bit more time. I can give you a little bit more time. Thank you. Thank you for chiming in. Just a little bit more time, guys. Okay, we're gonna go over this now. So to do this first one, our scale factor is four, okay? So our scale factor is four. So all I'm doing is I'm taking all of these points and I'm multiplying everything by four. So P prime, negative two times four is negative eight and negative one times four is negative four. Q prime, negative one times four is negative four. Anything times zero is zero. And then I have r prime, and I have anything times 0 is 0, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Okay, so again, you're just multiplying, and that's it. Okay, so for this one, we got to be a little bit more careful. So just, I'm going to do some work over on the side here. If you don't have a calculator and you do this, okay, you can simplify this and this. 5 goes into 10 twice. So this is just becomes one times four over two, which is just two. So again, if you have a calculator, you can do that with a calculator, but this is how to do it without a calculator. Five over 10, right? Five over 10 is one half and half of four is two. So if we type this in a calculator, you're just going four tenths times all of this, then T prime four tenths times five is two. And then if it's negative, it's negative two. And then r prime, okay, well, try this one. If you have 10 times four tenths, the tens go away and you just get four. And then negative five, that's gonna be negative two again. And then y prime, we already did 10, it's gonna be positive four. And then the five is gonna be positive two. Okay. So your homework uh, for next class, which is gonna be, oh my gosh, it's Tuesday. So for Friday, so for this Friday, it's going to be uh, a little bit of finding the uh, scale factor and then using the scale factor to get new points. You might have to plot some points uh, on uh, big ideas, just kind of like how we did, we plotted some points, okay? 
And so, and then that's gonna be it. So with my last couple of seconds, I just wanna remind people, 80% of your grade is assignments. Make sure you guys are doing assignments. If you guys need help doing your assignments, my office hours are every school day, so Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, in the morning from 6.35 to 8.50. So if you guys come in, we can sit down and we can do all our homework together. I think yesterday I had a geometry student come in, or I can't remember if it's geometry or algebra, but I had a student come in and we finished three assignments in one morning, okay? That's a huge impact on your grade when 80% of your grade is those assignments, okay? And of course, they were all 100% because we worked on them together. So if you guys are struggling, please let, uh, I just want you guys to know you're not alone. Please reach out to me, send me an email or come to my office hours and I can help you out, okay? Um, and then one other thing, uh, just remember that the end of the trimester is March 12th. So we only, we only have a little bit, we only have a little over two weeks left. So uh, now's the time guys, it's kind of our last push to, um, to get things done, okay? So with that said, uh, 